Good morning, Mr. Peter Sayarto, Minister of Foreign Affairs in Hungary. Uh, welcome to Lebanon for a new time. I am glad to see you again and to be with you again. What about this visit? Visit Lebanon regularly? Uh, well, I have the um, honor and pleasure uh, to uh, meet my uh, Lebanese colleagues on a pretty frequent basis. I just made a calculation. I've been um, a minister for eight and a half years now, and I have met Lebanese colleagues of mine 18 times uh, already. 18, 18 times already. And uh, I have been a frequent visitor uh, here in Lebanon as well, which I really do enjoy because this is a uh, fantastic uh, country. And um, with Jebran, the former foreign minister, the, uh, the head of the FPM, we have made good friendship. And uh, now I'm here based on his uh, invitation to uh, take part on the conference about the uh, Syrian displaced uh, persons and to inaugurate a church, the uh, reconstruction of which uh, has been uh, financed by uh, Hungary. And of course, as I'm here, I have uh, taken the opportunity to uh, meet your foreign minister to go through a very rich agenda of uh, bilateral issues. Uh, you participate just now in this conference. Uh, for you, what uh, your opinion about this crisis? Uh, in your opinion, uh, it will take end this crisis? Look, um, we um, have been faced with the crisis uh, of migration since 2015 in Europe. And our position, Hungary's position, has been always very clear. We do believe that uh, migration is a bad and dangerous phenomenon. We do not believe those who say that it's positive. We have seen the consequences of uh, migration in Europe already. We have seen the establishment of, uh, of um, parallel societies. We have seen the total incompletion of integration. And uh, we have seen the... Um, loud minorities pressure being put on the silent uh, majority to give up the values according to which they had been living for centuries or even longer uh, period of time. So in Hungary we have been representing the approach that migration should not be managed but it should be stopped. And international community should aim at uh, helping people who had to leave their homes to return. In order, to in, 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 um, in order to help people to go back, circumstances must be uh, created. So instead of inspiring further migratory waves, international community should help people to return through making circumstances appropriate for their returns. So when it comes to Syria, uh, for example, I think international community should concentrate on how to create circumstances in Syria which would allow the people who had to leave Syria to go back mm. and, and not on inspiring them to leave. And, and we all know that, uh, that Lebanon has been making a tremendous job in hosting the displaced mm. persons from Syria. We all know it costs a lot for you. We all know you are wearing a huge burden. And we all know that we cannot expect more of you neither from Lebanon, nor from Jordan, nor from Turkey, nor from Egypt. So in order to ease this burden, and in order to avoid further destabilization of this region, we have to um, uh, ask those people for whom the circumstances are given to go back to Syria. Mm. So instead of inspiring people to leave, we have to inspire people to return. Because if we can't do that, uh, then the burden on the shoulders of these companies like yours will increase in a way that uh, together with the um, food supply crisis caused by the war in Ukraine, there will be millions or even tens of millions who would hit the road and become illegal migrants. How Hungary helps this, uh, uh, these refugees to, 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 to return? in their land uh, through your European Union or uh, through Hungary uh, uh, in direct? How Look, you can help? Yeah. Look, unfortunately, mm -hmm. European Union, namely the bureaucrats in Brussels, have been um, following a very bad, a very bad track uh, 
regarding uh, the policy on migration. Because Brussels and the European Union itself uh, inspire and encourage the migration instead of uh, helping people to go back. So what the European Union makes is kind of an invitation for the people. And you know, millions of people take the risk, they even put their own lives at risk, and they pay a hell of money uh, to smugglers, to traffickers. So trafficking now is one of the best businesses uh, in this region, or I mean around the Mediterranean. So um, since we cannot trust Brussels in this regard, uh, we do it on our own way. We give help directly, because our approach is that we have to bring help where it is needed and should not bring problems where there are no problems. So uh, instead of uh, inspiring people to leave their homes, we have to create circumstances which will not force them to leave. So to give you an example, currently we are financing 26 projects in Syria. 26, 26 projects which aim at uh, helping people to stay or to return. We have been contributed to the reconstruction of hundreds hundreds of uh, houses in uh, Homs and Latakia. Okay. We have been financing reconstruction of, uh, of schools. We even have built new schools in certain regions of Syria for the students to be able to study. We have been uh, participating in the financing of the operation of hospitals in Damascus and in the um, neighboring areas. We are financing agricultural um, developments. Hmm. So. With this, we create circumstances mm. which will allow people to stay or to go back. In Lebanon, uh, we have been um, contributing to the reconstruction of uh, 63 Christian churches, for example, mm. in order to help the Christian community. Okay, for uh, Syria, for Syria, you help uh, through the ONG or you help uh, immediately through the government? We do it directly uh, with the churches. Churches. So we work together with the Christian churches. We are a, um, a proud uh, nation where the Christian statehood goes back to 1,000 years. So we are a true Christian country and we stick to it. And uh, as a Christian country, we feel responsibility to support those Christian communities all around the world who might be in trouble or who might face challenges. And that's why we work together with the Christian patriarchates and the Christian churches in Syria directly, as we work together uh, with the Christian churches in Lebanon directly as well. Let, uh, let's talk about the relation between Hungary and Lebanon. Uh, what's new? What's uh, this? Uh, we, we feeling we are uh, distinct for you. It's, I have reason or no? <laughs> well, you're right. Uh, Hungary pays a special attention to Lebanon. We do, uh, we do it uh, because of two reasons. First, we do believe that uh, the stability of Lebanon plays a key role when it comes to the stability of the Middle East. And you know, stability, security and peace in the Middle East is very important for us because if there's no peace and no stability in the Middle East, it has an immediate direct impact on the security of Europe and on the security of Central Europe. And since we have a war in the neighborhood in Ukraine, we don't want another uh, destabilizing uh, factor. So we want uh, peace to be here and stability to be here in, in the Middle East. And we all know that Lebanon has a key role in that. Second, that uh, Lebanon has a very strong Christian heritage. Mm. That's why we do support the Christian communities here. And when we ask the Christian communities, uh, so how we could help you? Uh, they asked, they answered, the answer was that please save our churches because mm -hmm. our churches will save our communities. So we decided to uh, finance the uh, reconstruction of 33 churches in the first stage, 1.8 mm -hmm. million dollars. And now we agreed on, uh, on the reconstruction of 30 other Christian churches for a value of 2 million uh, dollars. So altogether 63 churches, uh, which I hope uh, will contribute to the um, preservation and maintenance of the Christian uh, communities and the Christian faith uh, mm -hmm. here in Lebanon. Many crises and problems in Lebanon now, just not uh, uh, only restoration or uh, uh, 
we have uh, for education we have a big problem for the university hospi uh, the hospital uh, you do the project for this uh, this branches yeah absolutely we offer uh, 50 scholarships for uh, Lebanese students on Hungarian universities uh, every year to come to study for a uh, <coughs> year in Hungary and then come back with a competitive knowledge. We have taken part in the reconstruction of those flats which were demolished uh, after the, um, the accident uh, at the uh, port, um, the blasting. And uh, we are ready to, um, to help you uh, furthermore. We have, uh, uh, we have um, initiated by the European Union to give uh, financial assistance to improve the capacities of your defense forces, uh, 6 uh, million euros have been sent uh, in this uh, regard and we are always pushing for a fair and balanced approach towards you uh, not being biased and not being offensive on you. The world uh, faced uh, now uh, many many challenges uh, uh, about Christianity, about uh, values, about uh, you are uh, a Christian state, uh, you, uh, you are proud yeah. because you keep God in your uh, constitution. Uh, in your opinion, how we can uh, uh, reserve our, or keep uh, these values in our uh, society? Look, we have to be brave enough to speak up uh, for our values and for our heritage. Because currently, the liberal mainstream is ruling the global discourse. And the liberal mainstream is very aggressive. Uh, the liberal mainstream uh, causes a very uh, aggressive way of secularization. Everything what is uh, related to uh, heritage, to uh, culture, to uh, religion is being considered as old, retrograde and something that should be left behind. And we have to speak up against this liberal mainstream and we, we have to make sure that our communities have the chance uh, to, um, to experience and exercise their faiths as it is. You know, liberal mainstream speaks always about tolerance, uh, about freedom, liberty, but in the meantime, they are, they are making a kind of hegemony of opinions and the hegemony of, um, of uh, way of life or seeing things, you know. <coughs> so we, we Christians have to be brave enough to speak up for our interests, for our values, for our faith, and, and, and we have to be brave enough to live accordingly. So um, I have this kind of debate many times in, in Europe because uh, in the Western part of Europe a very aggressive secularization is uh, taking place. But uh, nevertheless, Hungarian people are, are sticking very much to the, to the heritage uh, of ours. Our constitution speaks very clearly about the role of Christianity in uh, the thousand year long maintenance of our uh, uh, statehood. Uh, so we are, we are definitely proud about that. And, and you know what I see is that um, that the Christian communities all around the world are becoming more and more proud, braver and braver, uh, to, um, to live according to their own values. Uh, before ending this uh, short interview, uh, I will uh, tell you thanks, thank you, thank you very much, because uh, all times so you keep space for Telemir Norsat. We are uh, proud to be with you also. Uh, what about your message uh, for the uh, Lebanese people who uh, live in a crisis, who live in problems, uh, often for the youth, mm. for the youth, Lebanese. Well, we understand your situation very well because um, um, the current uh, global circumstances uh, create a crisis basically all over the world. I'm coming from a country which is suffering from a war in its neighborhood. The war in Ukraine puts uh, huge uh, challenges and burden on us when it comes to economy, when it comes to taking care of the refugees, when it comes to energy, when it comes to the price of the commodities, and, um, and, and, you, and, and I could uh, continue. Uh, but, um, but we have to face uh, these uh, challenges, uh, we have to stick to our own uh, values, and uh, we have to uh, be brave enough to follow our national interest. If we are brave and strong enough to resist the external pressure, if we are brave and strong enough to reject the um, attempts to interfere into our domestic issues, then uh, we will survive and, and we will be even stronger after the crisis compared to how we entered. 
you know, uh, when it comes to uh, the political situation in Lebanon, then the Westerners uh, tend to uh, behave as teachers, uh, uh, thinking that they know more about Lebanon than you Lebanese yourself. Uh, and we don't like this approach. They try to do it with Hungary always as well, you know, they try to tell us how to accommodate our own lives. They should, they should leave it to us. And we should leave issues in Lebanon to the Lebanese people to decide. So, and, and I, I'm pretty sure that if you decide according to your best capacities and your best knowledge, then, then things will be all right. What, what you, you should know is that Hungary will always stand uh, with you. Hungary will always help and assist uh, Lebanon. And we will always uh, fight and argue in the international political organizations for a balanced and fair approach uh, towards uh, Lebanon. And we will never judge, never criticize. And we will make sure that uh, no pressure uh, will be put on the Christian um, uh, community uh, from outside and no pressure on the representatives of the Christian community either. Mr. Peter Sejarto, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs in Hungary, uh, thanks for you. Thanks for your support for Lebanon in uh, uh, and all also for uh, to be uh, always with us, uh, have a nice short stay in Lebanon, and thank you. Thank you very much for this possibility, and God bless all of you.